the first thing I always ask is, hey, who, who is he? Oh, he's a cool ass dude. He's you know, he's yeah. legit. Like you should. Is he asking me in the podcast? But no, I'm just asking. You know, when you ask me, just ask around and shit. <laughs> but everybody had great shit to say about you, bro. Ah, uh, fuck yeah. Like everybody yeah. did. So I was like, okay, well, fuck it, you know. I, I, Especially because you guys are starting out, bro. You know what I mean? Like I'm nobody big to me. Right, Ooh, I'm nobody big, yeah. but in the sense of like, if I can help a little bit on your guys' journey, then for sure I'm, I'm, I'm down. Welcome back to the most authentic, most organic podcast out right now, a Toast to Life podcast. Let's go. <laughs> so I was trying to work on this introduction <laughs> because the man that's sitting right next to me and sharing the microphone with me is changing the world and is leading a pack of entrepreneurs that are finding themselves. He is a girl's dad. He is a husband. He is a loyal friend. Um, honestly, I am so glad and blessed to be sitting right next to you. Let's welcome in Jason. Damn, that's an introduction. <laughs> Dude, I was working on it the whole week. I was like, I can't fuck you this You could have just said I got Jason here from, from uh, Self Made. That would have been good, too. So let's <laughs> hop right into it. You're self, not just one Self Made. Yes, sir. You're a part of two. We've got two Self Mades under the belt right now. Shit. Yeah. How did, how did the whole thing from the beginning start that you got into Self Made? <sighs> oh, man, it's a quite a journey. So um, the self-made was something that kind of happened later in life for me. Um, I've been in the fitness industry just to kind of go back. I've been in the fitness industry for about 15 plus years. Sure. Um, started as a trainer to a fitness director, to district manager, to regional. So I, I used to work a lot in the, um, the big box gyms. Okay. And I feel like working in those big box gyms were a good time for me because I, I learned the business management. I learned the financing. I learned the P&Ls. I learned the important stuff that you have to learn in order yeah. to be an entrepreneur. Um, I went to college. Went to college uh, <laughs> one year. And then um, my fitness director offered me a position where I was making more than my parents at like 20 years old. Jesus. So I was probably making, God, close to $110,000, $120,000 just being like a fitness director. You know, my dad, um, he works at a warehouse. You were at six figures by 20 years by old. By 20 years old, bro. So, you know, I, obviously everyone tried to talk me out of it. You know, think of the long run. Yeah. Uh, think of, you know, and, and again, I have a daughter. So for me, education is important. I'm going to preach that to her. But I think um, understanding early what my passion was and what really my end goal was kind of prompted yeah. me to go more towards the, the, the business side of it. So um, opening self-made, I was already an independent contractor. Okay. And I looked at some other franchises. I looked at a couple of them. But what I loved about Self Made is it kind of aligned with what my my whole thought process, my whole dream was. The whole was owning my own gym was actually creating other entrepreneurs, cool. right? I think that's what separates us from a lot of gyms. Is our goal isn't memberships. Our goal isn't anything other than your success in your business. Yeah. Right. And that's what I used to do. So when I was corporate, I used to get a group of trainers and train them on how to be better trainers right? How you do conversions, how you do uh, just even prospecting on the floor or prospecting on a phone call, or even just getting someone in front of you and kind of helping map out their, their programs. Yeah. So I was always good at that. It was always like, I was always like the highest producer in the, in the company. So I knew if I can do that for myself, it'd be something I'd be successful in for because one, A, I love doing it and Thanks. I was fucking awesome at it. That's <laughs> what they say. Like if you're good at something, run with it. hundred percent. And um, I think for me, the realization wasn't so much the money because to be honest with you, dude, I didn't even at 21, 20 years old, if I made 2000 bucks a month, I was straight. So the money wasn't even that big of an issue. I didn't yeah. buy anything extravagant. I saved it. I didn't even do a lot of things. No, nah, bro. I did. I really, no, I didn't spend. I still have all the money I made during those corporate years. I still have, bro. We have people and I'm guilty of it. We make 40, maybe even 50 and we're already buying a $50,000 car. Well, you know, that, that's because of your society or, or like your generation now yeah. is more about the flex. Let's and talk see, about that. See more about the flex, more about what I have. And, and it's so funny because I get 
I get a lot of shit because that's shoes that I have, right? But I tell people, if me buying shoes is a flex, then we're not even on the same fucking level. Because to me, buying shoes is just buying shoes. Yeah. Right. A flex to me is you have properties, you have rentals, you have stuff like that. Like that's a flex to me. So when I was younger, I didn't really have to deal with a lot of the stuff that you guys had to deal with as far as social media. Obviously, we had Facebook, we had MySpace and stuff like that. But no one was really like out there like pushing G wagons and being on like 20. Or nowadays, yeah. you see every girl on a vacation and you're like, Come on, bro. Show, show your parents in the background. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a family trip. I know you're about <laughs> your boyfriend and stuff. So I think, you, I think people feel, especially younger people feel, yeah. that they need to flex in order to get followers. And They want to fit in. They want to fit in. And I think uh, everybody thinks that they should have the perfect booty, the perfect abs, the perfect, the perfect whatever in order to post on Instagram, in order to keep up with their friends on Instagram. But, I mean, you guys are on Instagram as much as I am, so you know yeah. how much work goes into it. A lot. Yeah. So. I was telling someone this week, I'm like, I love what I do, and we come to do this every weekend, and we we're going to take, like, a three-week break. And I was like, one week? I'm like, nah, I can't do can't, this. can't, bro. I'm like, I got to go back. You can't, bro. And this is, this is what you signed up for, though. Yeah, you so. Know? This is what you signed up for. So I said the break, and then I told Aubrey that we we're going to do the uh, following weekend with uh, Alan, and she was like, I thought you are going to take a break. I'm like, <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought so. But, you know, I think when you love something so much and you're passionate about it, you do everything possible to get right back to it. 100%. If you take some time away from it. And it's not really work, to be honest with you. Like, I, I love, as much as there's a negative to social media, and yeah. we could get into that a little bit later, but that's more of, like, obsession with the phone. I love shooting content. I love interacting with people. I yeah. love telling my story. And I feel like I love telling my story because not because it's original. It's because I feel like a lot of people are going through the same thing. And they just, if you connect with me, there's no reason why you can't do what I'm doing, right? Yeah. There really isn't. You know, I don't have some kind of crazy story where I was addicted to drugs. I had a great home, right? My mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad worked. My parents are still married. Um, I played sports. I graduated high school. I was no drug dealer. I was never in jail. I don't even have a record, you know? So I feel like people need to make up these crazy stories. Yeah. Like, I was, in, I was in the mud, and, you know, now I'm here, yeah. you know? But for me, I think it's uh, it's how you kind of visualize those, those bad things in your past. So like for me, we were always kind of uh, poor, but my mom, it always seemed like we were rich because we had a tight family knit, you know? So my mom's from Mexico, my dad's from Hong Kong. So, you know, I had, family is very important on both sides. So for us, I didn't even know we were poor until I made money. Then I was like, damn, mom, we couldn't afford this. Like <laughs> I'm buying this shit at like 20 years old. So at what, what moment when you were making that much money, did you realize like, Yo, I'm doing good. Like, at what exact moment do you, if you can remember that part? Oh, fuck, you know, I, I feel like it goes in levels. And I tell this to a lot of my younger trainers. Like, I think the first, the first flex, like, me and my wife have been together for, like, 15 years. It's, like, when I paid for Hawaii. Mm. And I was like, oh, we're going to go on a trip to Hawaii. Yeah. And I go, we don't have to have anybody give us money. We paid for it. But really, I think the first time when we kind of felt like, damn, we're making money, is we didn't have to go to Applebee's and get the two for 20. Like, it sounds real... Like, what the fuck? But we used to go on, like, date nights, and we used to go to Applebee's. Oh, shit, we get the dessert. We get the appetizer. It was come yeah. out to whatever. And there's, there's, there's uh, milestones in your life, and I think everybody wants to go from here to, like, now I own a G-Wagon or a mansion when there's little things where we go to restaurants. I don't even look at the price, right? My daughter, we go to Disneyland. You know, I see parents with, like, sack lunches and shit like that, and, yeah. you know, they can't eat there or, or, oh, no, we can't grab that. I literally just go, what, what the fuck you want? You know, yeah. which is bad because <laughs> I got a teacher, you know, the value of it. Yeah. But I feel like for me right now, like that's my biggest flex is I don't really have to worry about bills. I don't really have to worry about where the money's coming from. You know, I get to do what I love. And for me, the first time I realized that was when we I didn't even open a bill and I knew everything was taken care of. You know how like when you're younger, you're like, oh, my credit card bill, my cell phone bill. I don't even know how much. I, I don't even know how Your much fucking money eyes just grow like two yeah, times yeah, bigger yeah, like yeah. oh yeah. shit I don't I even that. I don't even know how much um, comes out of my account in the sense of like bills I just know it's taken care of every month I know that we do it comfortably and to me that's like that's right where I wanted to be so let me be controversial so what if I don't maybe, maybe you already got these people that came to you like dude you don't have to be doing that you don't have to be wasting your money and spending your money on whatever like impulsively or whatever it is like have you gotten that type of question or like some maybe coming from someone that doesn't want to see you succeed in a sense? Oh, well, they're going to do everything they can to stop you. So, uh, <laughs> no, I haven't had anything about my maybe my wife because I do buy a lot of clothes. <laughs> but um, other than that, I don't ever go outside of my means. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, no, I haven't really had anything. Probably he's probably the most expensive 
purchase I have this month. <laughs> Talking about my uh, my videographer. Shout him out. He's, he's, he's doing work. But. Uh, but other than that, no, I mean, um, I haven't had anybody tell me anything that I don't already know or I haven't seen someone else do. So for yeah. me, it's kind of like I already know what my end game is. So for me, it's literally since I was younger about stacking money, you know, spending. But I do believe in having fun. So yeah. I do believe in Paying, paying for vacations, doing stuff like that with my family. Rewarding yourself. Rewarding that's why you work. Taking care of your family. I think that's exactly why you work long hours. And even if you don't want to call it work, what you do to get paid, the amount you get paid, why not just for you to be comfortable, but for the people that you love, that love you, to be yes. comfortable. And like, yo, if I did this, we can all enjoy this shit. Right, right. I mean, that's why, that's why I appreciate the team. The, um, the more we all grow, I mean, exactly that. Like, we have one guy reached the pinnacle, I think, of what the end game should be for fitness. You know, he has, like, 600,000 followers. He gets paid to post. He gets paid. Is it uh, Darren? Yeah. Yeah. That ab guy. On uh, ESPN. On ESPN. On, on every social yeah. media platform because of the workouts he does. But and it's, it's, like, what, 10-second videos? Bro, like, <laughs> I shoot some of his shit sometimes. Like, we were just talking about that. Is that uh, he came to the gym. You know, obviously, he's not with us anymore. He's doing bigger, better things. But he still comes to the gym, work out. Yeah. And he's like, I would have never thought this would be my life when I was working that 9 to 5 in Pasadena before you hit me up. You know, like, he was like, I'm going to be one of your trainers. I was like, who the fuck is this guy hitting me up? And then I met with him, talked with him. And I told him, bro, you're way too good looking and good shape to be at an office. Like, you need, we need to expose you to social media. So he learned the game fairly quick. And um, he ran with it, bro. But his... Business acumen is right there. Like, he doesn't, it wasn't an accident where he is where he is. It was meant ne to be. Networking, literally filming every single day, making sure his content's lined up, making sure whoever he has uh, contracts with, he fulfills it every single month. So he'll be like, hey, I got to shoot in these, in these sweats. Let's go shoot some content. So he'll give me his camera. We'll shoot some stuff at our gym. Um, he treats it like a business. But then at the same time, I go, bro, you're getting paid to work out. You're getting paid to drink an energy drink. You're getting paid. You're getting flown out to Miami to do a workout on the beach with another guy. Like, I don't want to give too much of his stuff out, but, you know, you probably get him on the podcast, but he has, a, he has so many ventures that he's doing, and all of it revolves around having fun. And that's the end game. That's what social media literally, allows us to do. Literally doing what you love and getting paid for it at the oh same time. Oh, my God, yeah. And he, he's a great guy, too. So, so let's talk out. about the qualities that you look for in when you get a trainer on. Um, How for, does that process go? You know, it's, it's pretty simple for me. Uh, obviously, we like people that have experience. We like people that have trained before. But uh, you have to be really open-minded and really willing to work in a team atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason why we work so well is because we all do it together, kind of similar to what you guys do here. Yeah. Right? If, if I go and I start to blow up a little bit, I'm going to say, let's get a workout in. I'll tag you. Let's shoot some content together. Like, that's literally how self-made itself got so fat, so big so fast. And people are like, I, I saw you guys one gym one time, and now you guys have, like, 40 of them. And that's because the power of social media and uh, kind of similar to what you guys are doing here, right? It's very similar to you have to understand that we're all in this together. We call it the family, and I get a lot of shit for that because we say fam a lot. But until you're really in it, you understand. We go to each other's birthday parties. We go to each other's shows. Um, we go to all of our stuff together. Like, we're literally like a family. When we eat together, like it's like I'm back home with my family. Yeah, I think know? every time you post, there's like 10, 12, 15 people, and this is like... It's not just that group, but there's other people that we follow on the South Made family. And it's just not just two people. It's oh, dude, we're, Yeah, we're huge, but we're an army. And we have a lot of people that don't like us. And I feel like they don't like us because they're not in it. So what, what do you think is the misconception or misguidance that people get from people that work out uh, South Made or a part of South Made? Um, I think the biggest thing is people think that it's all for the gram, right? They do. They, but those same people... If they were in it and they did the same thing, they would, they would embrace it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, for me, I recently did a show, and uh, I did a show because it was on my bucket list. I wanted to do it, but I had so many people that were like, oh, Jay's is doing this for the gram. Jay's is doing this to get followers. Jay's is doing this for some kind of content. And I was like, do you know how hard it is to fucking do a show, how much work goes into that, how much sacrifice? So, for me, that was, like, kind of my feel. So, when I won the whole entire show, I put on my Instagram, like, oh, what are you going to say now? That I'm not about it because I literally just beat everybody at this fucking show, you know? So it's kind of like, Come hey, on, Instagram. You fucking did, Instagram, at least. You know? I, it, but, you know, and now it's kind of on my bucket list. It's off. Now people are like, you can do another one? I go, no, I just, I literally did it to let you know that I can do everything if I put my mind to it. You know, uh, I think being in this industry as a, as, a, as a gym owner, you have to be able to uh, walk the walk and talk the talk. So for me, a lot of people, 
Um, they think, oh, this is this great. If you do the numbers, right, owning a gym is, is very lucrative if you do it right. But I don't think they understand the ins and outs of it, working with people that are in the fitness industry, working yeah. with clients if you've never done it. So a lot of people, they're, oh, I'm going to do this as an investment. And then you get into some real fitness shit, and you're like, oh, damn, okay, I don't even know how to relate to these people. Yeah, because instead of being – like, uh, we had David and Victoria from Oxnard of House of Gains and r told us the breakdown, told us everything. Yeah. And he told us about the hardest thing that you had, he had to do as a gym owner. Mm -hmm. And I still, it's similar, but it's still kind of different to, like, you guys, to you, because you're not just, it's not just random uh, people coming in and out. Yeah. Like, you have an established set of trainers. Those trainers have an established set of clients. Right. So it's like there's a – can we call it like a pyramid type of thing? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Right? Uh -huh. So what would be like the hardest thing that you you as a owner had to go through? Because you're not just like one gym. You're <laughs> part of two gyms. Uh, I mean, the hardest thing in general was COVID. Okay. Um, but that's like a one-off. But I would say that through the day-to-day -day is trying to find new ways – because everybody's different, right? Mm -hmm. Every trainer that comes to me is different in the sense where – um, you may get one guy that's totally love Instagram, wants to be an Instagram, wants to promote, um, will do that. And another trainer won't. So it's like mentoring them on the importance of Instagram, the importance of having a clean profile. Then you'll get that same guy that loves Instagram, but he doesn't know the value in actually doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation, yeah. right? So his consultations are more like, oh, I want to kill this, this individual so they know how much value, but you don't build value by killing somebody. Yeah. You build value value by actually sitting down and talking with them and finding out the ins and outs of their life. Because most people that are overweight or people trying to get some kind of results stem from a goal that they have, right? And it could yeah. be something as, as emotional as, um, I used to fit into stress, now I don't. So when you find out the why, just like anything else, yeah. then the rest of the stuff just kind of falls into place. Then you always bring that back. So it's coaching each individual personality that I have. Because we have about 50 trainers in West Covina, and we have about 40 in Chino Hills. Jesus. So it's more like juggling, you know, I have some that are set that know their shit and literally they'll just use me for, you know, some content and stuff like that or maybe just like a, a pep talk. Yeah. Then you have some that are like, dude, I don't even know where to start. So well, it's like, okay, well, let's get you in here. Let's, let's get the bare bones of it and then get it going from there. What's like the best pep talk you've told somebody? Oh, uh, you ain't shit. Ooh. I mean, I, I tell that to a lot of people. I tell it to a lot of people. Like, you ain't shit. Why is that, though? Because you ain't shit. <laughs> you ain't <laughs> shit. You really ain't shit. I'm not shit, right? And I think a lot of people, they take that as a negative. But, yeah. of course, it sounds like it. And I'd be like, bro, you really ain't shit, though. And they're like, what do you mean? You haven't proven anything. And I think nowadays, everybody, it just wants everyone to pay them full price. Everybody wants everyone to, to, to give them recognition on Instagram. But let me tell you something. If you go back three, four years, I was non-existent. I was a bomb ass trainer in Rancho. I knew I was a sh I knew I was a shit, right? I was a shit at what I did. I was a shit in the corporate world, but I was very small in just that Rancho Cucamonga area. So for me, I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna wow people by my knowledge. I'm gonna wow people by my consultation. So I would say, hey, you know what? Even as a trainer, hey, you four trainers that don't really know, come with me on a Saturday and I'll show you how to do consultations. We'll sit here in the gym. And then those four trainers were like, dude, Jason taught me so much. And what do they do? They go tell the other trainers. Oh, then those other trainers told other trainers. And other trainers were like, okay, so where's your gym going to open at? I said, in West Covina. I know some trainers in West Covina that could probably use your help. Okay. My wife was fucking nine months pregnant. I was like, babe, I'm going to be gone for the weekend because I'm literally doing this for free, going to gyms, talking to trainers. Because I knew I knew my shit. So once everyone knew I knew my shit, then I could tell people, okay, I'm the shit. Right? But a lot of times I'll get trainers like, oh, I got, I got uh, half a million followers. You're good at Instagram, but it doesn't mean that's going to relate to a good trainer, Thanks. right? So even you guys with the podcast, right? Like you guys are hoping to get to, I would say the biggest podcast I know is like a Joe Rogan where you're getting sponsors, you're doing it, you're getting some big influential people, but you have to do these things first. You right. have to be here on a Sunday. We're on a Sunday, you guys. It's, yeah. it's Sunday, at like, Sunday. Sunday, like 9, 10 a.m. Yeah. You know, this guy's coming from fucking up north down here just, just to meet with me. Had but, a fucking bender. <laughs> <laughs> We're still ready, though. But these are the things that you have to do. In yeah. order to become the shit. You yeah, know? I think that's what um, some people think they understand. And then when it comes down to it and shit hits the fan, who is willing to do it? And that's what, like, yesterday it was just that, like, oh, like, can't you put it off? Can't you? I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, I got to do, like, if I miss this opportunity, someone else is going to do the opportunity and take advantage of it. Right. I'm like, I'm not leaving any stone unturned. I'm going to do it at, until the wheels fall off. There you go. So I possibly can't. And even then, I'm still going to figure out the way 
to continue. Oh, 100%. There's, so, there's, there's, there's always a way. And I, I, think, I think a lot of people that think they're the shit, they hit one roadblock and then everyone's their enemy because, oh, this person didn't give me my, my shine. Well, bro, you haven't really proved anything to me. Yeah. You know? So for me, I like people to prove things to me. Prove, prove to me that you're the shit, right? Yeah. If you're this bomb trainer, show me you can hold 10 clients, not just for one month, but for consecutively. And then I'll trust you to give you some leads, right? Or, or I'll refer you out to people. Because I have friends and family from the area and they're like, hey, do you know a good trainer? I'm like, yeah, I do. But they've proven to me that they could keep a clientele base for a certain amount of time. Facts. You know, so for, for me at West Covina, I mean, I don't think I'm the shit either. I'm still, there's some, some, some shit I could prove. Inside my head internally, I walk around like, oh, bro, come on. I'm the shit. <laughs> but I have to prove it. And I'm okay with that. Because Ten toes I, down. There you go. All the time. I feel like that's, that's real life is, is you could go up to any celebrity you want to be like, I'm the best makeup artist. I'm the best whatever. But until you prove it to them, they're not going to really fuck with you. Right? Because yeah. everyone's saying that. And uh, nowadays, I think too many people think they're, they're the shit and they don't really want to show that they are. You know, there's some insecurities there and they just want to be put on or they want to the shine. And then when they get it, like you said, yeah. they fold. Right. I'd rather have someone that's failed a bunch of times. Like I had this guy, he fucking, he owned a gym, had to close his gym, still has clients, went to corporate, corporate treats you like shit, stopped doing corporate, worked a nine to five, came back. He's an older guy. He's like, yeah, bro, I know I don't really fit in. I said, you're exactly who I want. Cause you've been through so many failures. There's nothing that you can, I can throw at you that you haven't overcome already. Yeah. Right. Instead of someone that's like, oh yeah, I have, you know, I have nothing but wins because every gym owner that you've had on here, I don't know what kind of real solid losses they've had but when shit really hits the fan you, you you understand what this business is about so what's one of the biggest losses you had to go i mean through? covid covid would probably be the biggest loss i think anyone has ever had as a gym owner uh, for me i was la county so literally i had to take my whole entire gym outside, outside. yeah right we used to live at the colony at the lakes oh did you okay street. bro <laughs> my trainers they overcame extreme heat extreme cold rain i even posted it on my ig there was a time where the whole entire gym was flooded all my brand new equipment I bought literally kind of fucked up. So I have to like be replacing. So it, that set me back two years. So I had a goal. 2019, I opened. 2020, I'm going to do this. We actually did the LA Fit Expo 2020. We had like 60 plus trainers. I, I mean, I don't know yep, if you remember, bro. We, shut, we, we yep. shut the expo down. Yeah. And then we had all this momentum and then it just went away. Oh. And then so like how do I as an owner, because I'm the captain of the ship, get that momentum back? How do I prove that you should be here at South Made with me because we're the shit. And that's what I tell people. Like, there's always going to be another gym that opens. There's going to be another podcast. But people really fuck with whatever gym or whatever podcast because of the, the individuals in there. That's so for me, I know I had to go in overtime. So the moment they told us we were going to close down, I was already on the phone. I found this, um, this warehouse from this guy that owned a YMCA, and he had $10,000 worth of, worth of equipment. So we bartered with him. He got him to bring it in. I bought it off him cash. Then I had to buy canopies i had to buy heaters i had to pay for security i had to pay the landlord out something different because of the fact that we were using outdoor space taking a parking there's so much stuff that went on behind the scenes yeah i just said oh it is what it is let's go literally every single problem that came up i didn't cry about it i cried a little bit but i cried for like five minutes and then i go okay what's the solution yeah so but i think the biggest thing is when you when you run any kind of corporate gym or even like you guys here right you sit down and you talk to them this is the game plan this is where we're going. This is the direction we're going. This is the hiccup we have now. This is how we're going to overcome it. Yes. This is where we should be. So I think the trainers that stayed with me, which was still a good amount, I told them, this is what I'm doing for you guys. This is where we should be once COVID opened, whenever it's over. And this is what we're going to do once we open that gym back up. And a lot of them stayed. They, they understand my vision. They, fight it. they fought the battle with they you. fought the battle alongside with Alongside with you. Oh, yeah, bro. I owe everything to them. I tell them every day. Like, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have, we would, there would be no gym, bro. It's, 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 it's literally them. Like, you know, I'm, I take a lot of the brunt on my shoulders because I can, cause I know I can handle it, but really it's, it's them, them tagging the gym, them hyping the gym up, them getting so much notoriety for that gym. And I don't lose sight of that at all. Yeah. You know, even when I do these things, I always give a shout out to both gyms because if it wasn't for them, that, that community they built within that gym, that's yeah. them. I'm not there every day. So, you know, when new people come in, I always say, you say hi to somebody, you know, take a picture with them, shake their hand, make them feel welcome. Um, they do that on the regular. So when I walk into the gym, it's like a family feel. Hey, what's up, Jay? I walk around, say every, you know, shake everybody's hand. I know clients. I know everything. But that's the way I envision the gym, where you walk into some gyms. Like, what gym do you go to? Hidden? In the strength. Right? It's probably the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You walk in there. Everybody knows you. They even, say, you they may say, not know anybody in there at that time. And, hey, what's up, bro? How are you? Right. But I think that's just... Now also, like, who we are as individuals, 
is no matter where we go in, we walk into a room, we got no, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. My name is so-and-so. Nice to meet you. Oh, 100%. what are you doing? Boom. Conversation sparks. 100%, bro. So that's why I tell everybody, it's like, yo, like, yes, we do the podcast. I love, we all love doing the podcast. I was like, but the conversations don't just happen on here. Like, I can have this type of conversation outside. Oh, for sure. Because I'm just like, oh, what's your name? So-and-so. And then, dude, like, what do you do? I mean, shit, before we even turned it on, we were, you know. We're we already going we on. We went into a whole, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so before the gym, before you went to uh, South Maid, mm -hmm. West Covina, what loss did you endure? Oh, man. Um, I was young one time, so uh, I uh, made a lot of bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And I would say the bad decisions I made were more not financial or anything like that. It was more along the lines of thinking I could get ahead by burning somebody else. Or thinking I get ahead by building a bond with somebody over shit talking. You know, I thought, okay, I was young. I was really, really energetic, ready to go. So I was like, I want this guy's job. How could I get his job the fastest? When my reputation as a trainer, as just like, oh, that guy's fucking shady, whatever, kind of came. I, it took someone that I really respect to sit down and talk to me. said, bro, what are you doing? Like this fitness industry, and that's why I tell my trainers, this fitness industry is all that you have as far as your reputation. Yeah. So, you know, I just had that, this talk with, with um, my boy in the car. Pretty much I'll almost take a loss to save my reputation in a sense, you know, depending. But when I was younger, I was like, did you hear so-and-so? You did this and they weren't supposed to do that. Damn, they're going to probably get in trouble, you know, just so it would get to the higher ups to do that. Um, I learned a lot just from being foolish, you know, thinking I could, um, I could neglect systems and just go off a of hype. Yeah, you know, and I, I understood that your hype dies down, but the systems are what keep the business running. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. So, you know, like your systems, you have uh, me scheduled, you have this person scheduled. Yeah, you could, you know, we could build hype for this thing and we'll get some people in here. But once people, once that hype's down, who do you have lined up? You know, so for me, it's more, I learned a lot of valuable lessons about business very early. Like I didn't graduate college, but I feel like I got my master's in business from actually doing business, from actually interacting with people that were way smarter than me you know learning how to do a pnl learning about profit and loss learning about you know just buildings how do you rent out a building how do you lease a building i learned that from just being in the business. in the business that like if you took someone out of college right and we both were going to get a lease i guarantee you i'd be able to negotiate that lease better than someone that has a master's degree in it well that's how they say like the best teacher isn't in a classroom it's life it really is like you know we're we'll get right into it and in right now but how do you know how to be a good dad? No. Um, it's instinctual. Yeah. It's instinctual. Uh, you know, and I feel like if you have a kid and you're not a good dad, then you never had that in you. Like, so for me, um, I helped raise my niece and um, I, it just, it was natural to me. I love, I love kids. You know, I always wanted kids, especially I want nothing but daughters. So for me, I have a daughter. Um, I don't, I think those challenges will come when she gets older. Right now, it's just about loving her, being there for her, teaching her things. You know, I think at this age, um, they learn how to quit really easy. So like she'll fall and she won't want to do something again. I'll literally stay with her until like she was, so she was jumping off a curb. She fell and scraped her fucking knee and you know, she cried, ran in and my wife hugged her. I said, get your ass back out here. I don't <laughs> want to. So I made her jump on that thing again until it became fun. And I think at a very early age, we learned like all of our, all of our demons and all of our fears come from when we were younger, right? Because our parents probably let us quit, right? So we played that sport and our, oh mom, I'm tired. Okay, well we'll just quit then. So I feel like, that gets instilled in kids and people really early. And that's a hard thing to, to get out of somebody, yeah. right? That, that willingness to go through it no matter what, even if you know you're not going to win, but just follow through with the follow through part. So for her, I feel like that's where the stage where we're at is teaching her, you know, besides the shapes and numbers, that's why she goes to private school, but being there, spending time with her, I want the memories to be not what I bought her, but you know, Oh, my dad took me on a bike ride. My dad showed me how to ride a bike. You know, my right. dad helped me overcome this and, um, it's kind of the same thing we do for trainers, you know, their fear of putting themselves out there on social media. What if someone's going to hate on them? People are going to hate on you, whether you're successful or not. I always tell people, look at LeBron James, probably the most <laughs> successful person out there. Million dollars. If you go on his, have you ever looked on his comments? They're hilarious. He oh, you suck, bro. You're balding. Yeah, but he's a fucking millionaire, you know? <laughs> so, so he just got, I just seen yesterday. He just got voted the worst actor in 2020. Who, LeBron? Yeah, because of Space Jam. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. He made so, a list. There's one thing that, that stood out. Um, speaking about LeBron, I'm a big fan. I have his uh, 
His high school one. Oh, okay. I have Slight flex, the, Miami, but okay. the Miami. Okay. His first time, number six. Yeah, LeBron on here is the end game then? Shit, right? That I, I love what he does in, in his podcast at the shop and everything. But one thing that always stood out, and I actually watched another one with Stephen A. Smith, is when have you heard me being in any sort of drama? Never. Like every other basketball superstar is going through. When have you heard me and mine? And I was just like, damn. That's facts, though. One thing that stood out about um, Stephen A., and he said this, the circle that I have, they're not allowed to speak about my personal outside of Stephen A. Because the moment that happens, now, you know, you're violating the circle. So the moment that you're in my life and out of my life, the difference is the moments to the minutes that I get in contact with you to take you out of my life. Damn. When he said that, I was like, fuck, bro, like, that's true. Like, I think us as young, like, we're, I'm 26, and when I was even younger, and I tell everybody, like, three years ago, four years ago, dude, like, I was still stupid. Yeah. I was trying to fit in with everybody, trying to please everybody, trying to make everybody else happy. And now I'm like, yo, like, there's people that are coming through my life that I look at now that where they're at, nowhere near. I'm like, dude, like, this what this what it was supposed to happen. Be. Like, you were supposed to be in my life for that moment, teach me something, and boom, now you're gone. Yeah, I mean, that's the exact same way. And as you get more successful, you'll see you got to categorize people. Um, for me, just because we're not friends anymore doesn't mean I wish, I wish, Correct. I don't wish you well, right? I yeah, wish yeah. you well. Even if you burn me. I wish you win, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because there's enough win for everybody. That's what people don't understand. If people think, like, if you shine, it's going to take away from my shine. Yeah, like, I don't want you to shine because that means I'm not going to shine. It's like, yo, why can't we both shine? Exactly. Even if we don't even mess with each other, like, on, on a different level. But um, my circle, what I learned, too, and you'll learn, is people go, oh, you know, you always show your wins on Instagram, right? I hear that a lot. I, that's probably my, maybe the number one thing I get. So sometimes I try to show things that are real life. But... You should never really vent your losses or complaints on Instagram because it's not going to help you at all, right? If I have something come up or I need advice, I go to my partner, Marissa, because we're going to come up with real life solutions and she's going to be very critical of maybe how I handle the situation. And that's what you need. And I think a lot of people just want to spiel their stuff. So they say, see, I'm real. But what you're going to get is a lot of people giving you the wrong advice on Instagram. So yeah. for me... If I ever need a vent, I vent up. I never vent down, right? My circle, literally, I trust them with everything because people will try to use that negative against you in the long run. <laughs> so yep. your circle is the most valuable thing you have. They have to. And, and I think because they don't value the circle or people they think value them, they, how you said, they tell them a loss and then that person runs with the loss. Yep, I got you. Yeah. Yep, I got I'm, I'm going to, hey, did you, how, how you said earlier, yep. did you hear about so-and-so? Yep. Like, dude, he's full of shit. He's not going to. And it's just like, those are the people that you got to be thankful for because they're already doubting you. Yeah. And don't do it for them. Do it for yourself. Right. A lot of people, um, and I've been saying the last couple of weeks, I'd rather walk into a room that I don't be loved and embraced than tolerated. So it's like when you go, even in high school, for those people listening, when you go to high school, you go to a party, someone you, that you don't like walks in. What do you do right away? Turn around. Like, Fuck. Yeah. This motherfucker. Yeah. Fuck that food. Did you, did you hear what he did? It's like, yo, so why are you there? Like, why? I think I don't, right now, I don't have that time to show any sort of hate. And that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what, you, what it is, is I don't have time. Yeah. I really don't have time to go on your page or find some kind of dirt about you because I'm trying to grow my own empire. You know Facts. what I mean? And, that, and that's, I think, where people that seek revenge for anything, you're fucking yourself over because you're wasting so much. And it is a lot of energy because we've all been there, right? We all hated someone, yeah. and I can't wait to see them burn. I can't wait to see them. But if they're really a bad person, they're going to do that on their own. Yeah. You don't even got to do anything. You don't got to help them. <laughs> you don't got to help them. They're going to do it on their own, and then they're not going to say, well, see, so-and-so set me up, bro. I've been over here just collecting my wins yeah. and my losses. But I've been just doing my own thing, you know. So for me, it's like I don't really have time for that. And, you know, some people get really mad about that. Um, when I first started the gym, I had a lot of time. You know, I had time to really sit and do a lot of these podcasts or sit and do one-on-one -on -one with trainers. But as I get busier, I don't have the time to do it unless you're invested already in what we're doing. Yeah. So I have trainers that reach out to me and they'd be like, oh, I remember when you used to, you know, we used to talk on DMs. You used to help me out. I said, bro, no offense. I just don't have time anymore. So even at Alan said it best, and you said it. We should put on a shirt. How do you balance? 
Oh, the balance thing. So, I so feel do you believe in the balance, or what's like your view on that? Because you create, I think right you, you, now you create your own balance, and that's always going to be the case. You're young, right? right? When I first started the gym, my balance was exactly what Eric said. I had no balance. It was full force the gym because there was a vision. If I can get this gym going, turning a profit within two to three years, then I can start to balance family life and 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 work life. Yeah. But when you're starting a business, you're starting any kind of new new business venture or a new job and you really want to make it, your focus should be a hundred percent on that. Yeah. And the discussion I had with my wife was, Hey, I know you're nine months pregnant. I know you're going to have a hard time, but I'm not going to be here a lot. But in three to five years, I'll have a lot more time to spend at home. I won't be working weekends. We should have this gym running, you know, maybe another gym is what I told her. And then we're going to collect those residuals, right? That passive income. We're going to, get some properties. We're going to maybe get another gym. If I feel like I'm, if I feel like I'm up for it, right. If the systems are in play and I guarantee you, and by the time our daughter's five years old, I'm going to be the best stay at home dad ever. Meaning I'm going to be doing it. And it's three years and I'm already the best stay at home dad. So I think if you're single, go full force on it, right? If you're in a relationship with someone, have that real life discussion of what the light, what your life is going to look like. And it's a hard sell because sometimes you may get someone that's like, I'm not for that. Like you need more time with me that's probably not the person for you. Then you have to pick, is it my business or is it this female or male, yeah. right? But I think as I get older and as my daughter matures, my balance is going to be work and home life. And right now, because we both work full time, the weekends are literally devoted to my family. So me even doing this, like takes away from that. But my wife understands, she, you know, she helps me get ready for it, gets things ready, cleans the house and do stuff. She has a full-time job, so yeah. she's a boss too. So don't think- <laughs> Does she work at- um... At the gym area? Oh, no, 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 no. She, um, she has a corporate job. Okay. Yeah, she has a corporate job, bomb benefits. So, you know, it helps when you're, <laughs> it helps in the early stages. No one understands no that one part. Yeah, no one understands that. That's, that's grown man talk right there, bomb yeah. benefits. But I, I think that, like, where Eric's at, and if you guys go back on that podcast, he's like, there's no balance if you're trying to be great, which he's exactly right. But he's also trying to build something. He has no wife. He has no daughter. He has any of that. Us that have families or have a long-time girlfriend or boyfriend, if that person is okay with it, then yeah, that's where the balance is. So was that a struggle for like you and your relationship? 100%. 100%. I mean, it really tried our, our, tried our marriage. Um, life changes when you get married, but life changes even more when you have a kid. Thanks. So, you know, and especially my industry, right? So my wife's friends are sending her stories of me with these girls in booty shorts and, you know, oh, look at this shit. You know, that, that's what our stories are, you know. Um, but she's been with me long enough to understand that this is part of, part of the business. Right. Not a lot of people would understand. Not a lot of people, but that's why she's my wife. Yeah. <laughs> right. I always tell people when you look at when you look for a wife or a husband, what you should be looking for, and this is everybody's different. You should be looking for a business partner. You should be looking for a business partner. I wanted to make sure that whoever I married could keep up with me and my ambition, yeah. can support me, not feel any kind of envy. You know what I mean? But also at the same time, give me good advice on what we can and can't do for our life. You know, and there's some things that I, I still have to hold on my end of the, of the bargain. And when I reach those pinnacles, then I'll probably put that on Instagram. But there's things that I'm still working on as far as like business acumen. But um, I never stray away from, you know, telling my wife I love her, telling her how beautiful she is, you know, spending time. Like my best times, honestly, like are, are our Saturday movie nights. Like we, that. we literally sit on the couch, have my daughter there. She lays between both of us and she just has the best time ever. It seemed that you guys were out and about, and then you're like still made it home to tuck her in. Every time, bro. Every time I try to. And that's a promise that I made to my wife three years ago, is that I will be that dad that I told her I would be. So when I got the gym, I told her, this is my balance. This is 100% of the gym. You don't understand. I was there seven days a week, dude. I was there from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. I was there scrubbing toilets. I was there vacuuming. I was doing interviews for new trainers literally seven days a week for a year and a half straight. How many strangers did you start off with? Well, I was lucky because I did the groundwork before I opened the gym, like I told you. So I already had 30 trainers, like, on my vision, on my dream of what we were going to do. And a lot of the the Instagram people you see right now that came from my gym originally, look at them now. I'm not going to name them, but look at them now. I mean, people that follow me, look at the people that used to be at South May West Covina. Granted, they're running with what we taught them. One of them didn't even want to be in front of Instagram. Right. One of them didn't want to take a shirt off because he didn't understand the value of it. Now you can't keep a shirt on this individual for their Instagram. <laughs> right. Um, a lot of the girls that were there, they have their own clothing brand that are blowing up. There are like 20, 30,000 followers. And they started off with me as 
a hundred and they worked a part-time job at Starbucks. You know, so I know the value that I bring that we pump out if it's something you want. Yeah. I tell people all the time, if you want to be a, um, a local hero trainer like I was, do it. If you feel comfortable with your 10 to 15 clients making whatever you make and you don't really want to expand on the brand, which is social media and make yeah. money as you're on vacation and do programs and do clothing, then we're definitely not the place for you. Nah. Because the moment you come in, you drink the Kool-Aid, you're, you're, on the full, <laughs> you're on the full run of it, right? I have Alan shooting content. I have videographers. We're doing this big event here at Hollywood. Like if you don't, like for me, if you don't come out to an event like this for free content, then this isn't what you're about. And I'm okay with that. Right, I don't. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. But if you're if you're in self made and you're really thinking the bigger the bigger picture of your own business, then you would want to do it. Wow. So taking it slightly back with you and your wife, because I think that's important for people our age group, older, younger that are coming up. That honestly, in my opinion, look up to the way you move in your life, what you post, and the people that know you. It's like damn, like he moves with with knowledge and power. Right there's a balance that he has that allows him to come in here, smile, put all the energy into everybody here and makes an impact in people's life. So now that you have, you have your daughter and you say that changed, changed you. In what way did it change you personally that makes you see the world different if it did? I mean, having a child in general just uh, changes you. It makes you softer. <laughs> Facts. So it makes you way, especially have a daughter. It makes me softer. Um, it makes me, I appreciate things a lot more than I did when I was 26 because you understand that you have um, someone that you have to take care of now, someone yeah. that's looking to you. And I always tell people, it's not so much financial because we were poor and we had a great, great upbringing. So when people go, oh, I bought my daughter this, that's not really teaching them anything, right? Um, my dad never went to a football game, never went to a wrestling, anything that I ever did, my dad never went to. My dad didn't teach me how to catch a baseball or a football. That was all my older brother. But what my dad did day in and day out, waking up sick, still going to work. I remember one time he got in a car accident. He like fractured his ankle. He taped it, bro. Taped it up, went to work, put a boot over it. So they wouldn't send him home. Like I witnessed that. You know what I mean? My mom recycling cans to get me what I wanted. My, my mom and dad we make fun of it now, but they still probably embarrassed, probably shouldn't say it, stealing shit <laughs> to make sure that we had shit for Christmas. You know, like literally a dash. <laughs> my first Nintendo 64, I think my dad, I don't think I know, my dad grabbed that shit and ran out. What it taught me now as an, as an adult is that they will sacrifice anything for their family. Yep. And there's no such thing as excuses or hard work. Granted, I'm not going to teach my daughter how to steal. Um, we're lucky enough we don't have to do that. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> but there's things that my parents did that they didn't talk about. They just did that really impacted my life more than anything they bought. I don't even remember what I got for Christmas or my birthday when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I remember seeing my dad. He works in a freezer putting on this, this like, it's almost like you're going to the snow because he had yeah, to wear that shit. Feel thermal jacket yeah, he had to wear shit. that shit for 14 hours a day to provide for us so we had a roof over our head. Those are things that I see every day. My dad never made excuses. My mom never made excuses. My mom never lies. You know, so if you want something, you go to my mom. So those are things that I feel like I learned from my parents that I try to instill, that I'm going to instill in my daughter, right? I'm not going to be, um, hey, you know, you got to work hard. She's going to see me work hard. Hey, you got to care about your health. That's all we really do at the house is, is yeah. conscientious of our health. So I feel like uh, what changed is how I move, right? My intentions for stuff. So... If I go around fucking people over, somehow along the line, my daughter will see that. I may not think of it, but there's things my parents did that I saw. I didn't really understand until I got older. So my, my intentions now are always very precise on how I do things. Thanks. Who I let into my life, who I let into my house, how close I let you get to my family. Not a lot of people met my wife, and it's not because of anything other than that's my family home. Sacred, bro. It's very sacred to me, right? So if I think my intentions and how I move, um, not so much how I spend money, but where I invest my money, where would that money be when she's 10, 12, 13, 14, 15? Yeah. Right. I don't care about myself right now. I have what I want. But how could I set her up? And then how do I set that up in a will? How do I set that up where she just doesn't get everything? You know, so there's a lot of things that go through my mind when it comes to, to my daughter. But I think what happens when you have kids is you don't think of two-year goals. You think of five-year goals, 10-year goals. Right. When I die, I want to make sure that I leave her with something. The longevity. Longevity. So I think my moves became more precise. My intention was a little bit more thought out now on just how I act. Yeah. I cuss a lot. 
I'm trying right now not to cuss a lot, but in the car, I cuss a lot. And she goes to a private school, and she said it a couple times. I'm like, okay, see, I yeah. have to be more intentional. Uh, yeah. I, got, I caught my son. Yeah. Because <laughs> he too. I was like, because I was like, oh, shit. And he was like, oh, shit. And I'm like, oh, dude. I'm like, damn. I always go, I always go this motherfucker. But I said like a joke. <laughs> I saw her. She said that, and it made me laugh. But I go, okay, I can't, I can't condone that. Yeah. But I think being a parent um, changes you. Changes everybody differently, and that's what I said. Depends on how, how how interactive you want to be with your family. You know, yeah. do you have? Uh, are you married? Do you have full custody? There's a lot of things that come in there. That's why I never tell people how to raise their kids or how to do stuff because everybody's different. Yeah, and that's literally one thing that I told my girlfriend. I'm like, look, we're both new parents. Mm-hmm. We've never had kids before. Yes, we help raise our younger siblings and everything, but this is this is Very ours. Different. This yeah. is our little, this is our gem. What do you have? What do you have a girl or boy? I have my son that's two years old and I have my daughter that's two months old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations, bro. Yeah, I, I, that's it. I'm done. Oh, so oh, yeah. I, I want one more. <laughs> yeah. I want one more. I want I'm one lucky because I got both. I'm blessed. Yeah. I got both. But, you know, my son, natural big brother. Yeah. And it's amazing to see. And one thing when he was born was, I was, when we were going home to West, it wasn't that far. My parents lived in Ballon Park. We lived in West Covina. Oh, that's what's up. Okay, I live in Ballon Park. It was a 10-minute drive, and by the time we would go home, because I I would coach at high school, he would, like, be asleep. And I'm like, look, and he's asleep, not even listening, not even caring. i like, just looking in the mirror, I'm like, yo, one day this will be easier. This is not forever. Trust me. So, I mean, everybody says COVID was bad, but shit, I got my house. We, we moved down. I told her, I was like, look, we're going to live here. We're going to learn how to live together. We're going to learn how to pay rent and everything. We're going to get out of this. Yeah. Trust me. And how you said, I put this in the back of my head. I did everything I possibly can. Ran through emotions, feelings, aches, whatever. I felt tired, sick. I got to get up. There's a goal. Boom. We were able to do it. No, 100%. I mean, everybody's dealt cards. Like I know a lot of people that did really, really well during COVID. Yeah. I know a lot of businesses that did really, really well during yes. COVID. And I know some that struggled, you know, and us being on the tail end of it that was struggling. Um, I understood that it was, it was temporary. So your goal is how could I manage this? It's only temporary. It's not forever. Thank God it was. Um, but everybody has like a, a, a hand they're dealt. And, you know, you hear that it's so cliche, but really you, you could be more successful than someone that was born into rich, had rich parents, right? I've seen it. I have friends that graduated, have their masters, and I, I'm doing better than them. You know, if you look at it financially wise. Yeah. So I always tell people, this thing, this life, this, this journey, it's really a marathon, right? Someone, you know, if you, if you guys are younger, you guys are in high school, and maybe college isn't, isn't for you, you have to have a plan, to be honest with you. I mean, you have to follow a passion. You can't just be like, I don't like college because I don't like school. There is very important things you learn in college, like how to write out a resume, you know what I mean? Or how to do P&Ls or how to understand how this industry works in general. But I think a lot of it's going to be following your passion and understanding that whatever cards you're dealt, maybe you don't have rich parents. That's okay. It doesn't mean you can't be successful. Maybe that person you went to high school with is now a master's and they have a job that maybe you wanted, but that's temporary because a lot of those people that have the jobs that I wanted fucking hate life. They fucking hate life, dude. And one thing I could never do, dude, and I was just talking again, to Val, when, when we were in the car, is like, man, I could never imagine myself in a nine-to-five. You know, one of the perks of being an entrepreneur, if there's a lot of them, is we can go to Hawaii, and I was telling my wife, let's stay an extra week. Fuck it, I'll just rent out in the room for another week. She's like, I can't, I got to go back, I have meetings, I have this and that. <laughs> I'm like, well, we'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got you, your flight leaves yeah, at this yeah, time, you know, I'll leave at this time. I low-key was joking, but I was kind of like, no, dude, we're good, you know, but... Like, waiting for the approval, like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at any moment, you're just an employee. Now, I don't care how, I don't care if you've been there 15 years. Yeah. You're an employee and you could get cut at any fucking time. Actually, on the way home yesterday, uh, again, I listen, I do my research and I study other people doing the same thing. And one guy was like, you know, when you die, people are going to cry for three days a week. Your job might suffer for a day. And the next day, you're replaced. You're replaced. You're done. They forget about you and it's just like, you got to think about that. I'm like, I think about that all the time. Every, and again, like I lived that. My dad got laid off and he was with that company for like 15 years. Shit. We went from having money to not having money. And in my head, I couldn't comprehend. I'm like, dude, you, even as a kid, I was like, you've been with this company for like, they're going to take care of you. Like there's going to be a severance. There's going to be something. No, you're an employee. When you get down to the bare bones of it, you are an employee. If you have to check in with someone, you're an employee. Yeah. 
right? And I tell, like, trainers, it's funny because when they give them for corporate, they're like, hey, this is my schedule. I go, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care what your schedule is. You know what I mean? Do you need help with something? No, you're not my employee, dude. I'm your right. partner. We're partners. You want to work two hours a, a week? If that helps you and helps you grow, then do you it. You can make it happen. Cool. Exactly. I so. think that that's the... We're just talking, I was talking to Cindy the other day, um, Friday, and we're just like, you leave a nine to five to when you start off, you're not working anymore nine to five. Now your hours may be nine to nine. It might be two hours. It might be three hours. But if you work the three hours, you make sure that what people did in eight hours, you can do it in three. Yep. He's like, and if you want to excel a little bit more, then you work the extra hour. You put in how much you want into it. Exactly. Yeah. And not what people are telling you, like, you're only worth this. You're only worth 20 bucks an hour. Yeah. It's like, fuck that. My worth, yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit. I, I depict what my worth is, like, you know? I got to fight with you to get a raise to, like, so you can see the value that I bring to this. And it's usually like a 50 cent raise. Yeah. Oh, but, you know? oh, but yeah, I got a raise of $2. I'm like, that's it? Damn. Like, really? That's all you're worth? Two more fucking dollars? Isn't that, isn't, isn't that crazy? How, how we're, we're okay, I think... Nowadays, though, you uh, a lot. I always say you guys. A lot of the younger generation, you guys that are listening, that are can we, can we just say your age? I'm 38. I'm 38 years old. Bro, you're still young. Oh yeah, I mean no, I mean yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always thought everybody knew. Yeah, no, I'm 38 years old. So for me, I, I've I've done a lot. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes, but um, I think for a lot of the younger generation, even under 30, um, don't get caught into the rat race where you think your American dream is you have this salary, you buy this house, you have a family, you have this because you're going to look up at 32 or 33 and you're going to be stuck in that job with all these things that you have to work that job that you hate in order to afford that stuff. And that's what goes back to, um, I don't want to say being, yeah, financially smart with it, right? Yes, it would be so dope for me to, to roll around in a G-Wagon, but because I didn't buy those extravagant things, I was able to open a second gym. Because I don't buy a lot of extravagant things, it allows me to possibly do another property. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, you're going to look on Instagram, I hope you listen to this first, and they're going to tell you, you know, you need the bands, even if it's a low bands, you need to have the new J's. Don't follow me, because I'm old, dude, so my J's, have been, I've been doing this in the game for a while, so for me, it's been done for a while. Yeah. But really, if college isn't for you, I would say you have to have a plan for yourself, right? You're a videographer, you want to be a, a, a Instagram influencer, get into that industry right away, right? Get into that industry right away and meet with people that have the time to sit and talk with you that you value their opinion, yeah. right? Don't talk to your best friend that's fresh out of high school because you guys are just bouncing the same ideas off each other. Or going to tell you, uh, fuck, fuck that, bro. Let's just go do this and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, oh, that person doesn't fucking really respect you. That's why. I don't know what it is with a lot of young kids, but it's always like they don't respect it's me. It's like, uh, bro, what? I don't know. Like, they're hitting <laughs> yeah. their... Uh, I don't know. Are you guys like that? Or, or I hope I mean, not. Nah, I hear that I all know. the time. I hear that all the time from a lot of young Oh, they don't show me respect. Bro, they like, show them respect. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> yeah. And that's why I always tell them, like, you ain't shit. You know, it always goes back to, like, you ain't shit. And I tell them at the same time, I'm not shit. I'm in the room sometimes with people that are millionaires. And all I do is I sit and listen. Yeah. You know, and I used to get so caught up in, like, man, this guy is a millionaire and he's 40. Or this guy's a millionaire he's 35. I'm like, okay, these are the cars that I'm dealt. So I'm just going to steady go, steady go. Yeah. But what I learned, too, is a lot of people that are millionaires, there's things that they're lacking in their life that, you know, that I value, that I have. Mm. And so when I post something like, you know, my daughter or just we're chill. There's people that work so much, they're not even able to do that. I wish I, I had that. I wish yeah. I had that. And that's why I always tell people, if you woke up in the morning and you could afford this studio, do this podcast, you know, you could put a roof over your kid's head, you're already winning. Yeah. Right? Like, that's all you really need, bare bones in your life. Now, all the other stuff is for you to have to help grow your kid's life or your wife's life, and everything else is for a flex. Yeah, for sure. And that's literally... So with the whole thing with this and how taking it slightly back being parents is growing up, my dad out of like, I think he's like eight, is the only one that got educated, opened an own business, yeah. being an immigrant and everything, opened a business. Along the line, I was like, fuck, man, you're never here. Always like, it was a constant fight. I remember those fights always. Yep. To now I'm like, yo, like you gave me my career. Now, because I work with you and for you, and I always said like, oh, do you work for your dad? Like, that's your company. I'm like, nope. That's his. his. He did that. Yep. I'm like, now I got my company, which is all of this. So I'm trying to build it and bring it up to where when my kids are older, I get the same option that my dad gave me. You can go work wherever you want or you have this. Yeah. Same thing with my kids. I'm like, you have grandpa's, you have mine, and then you have yours. Yep. Whatever you want to do, balls to the wall. Let's do it. 100%. Dude. But I'm like, if I tell you, go work hard, follow your dreams, and then I shitted away a lot of things that it. Maybe I shouldn't have. I'm like, who am I to tell you? Yeah, I'm your dad, but 
if I don't have the track record of what I did and how I'm doing things, I can't tell you what to do. Same thing like someone told me, like when you're talking big dreams or, or visions and you're talking to people that have never done it or ever been in a scenario like that, like who are they to tell you? Are you going to go open a gym? Who am I to tell you don't go open a gym? It's not going to work. When I've never had anything to do with the gym. I had a lot of people tell me that too. <laughs> I had a lot of people tell me that. Uh, yeah, like, I had a lot of people tell like, me that. And no offense to anybody, but I'm sure everybody goes through that friend group and phases that, dude, like, what are you thinking? Don't do that. I'm like, bro, like, what have you done in that? Like, instead of like, all right, hopefully it goes good. I'm glad it goes good. And if it doesn't, you'll figure it out. And I think that's when you start separating yourself from a lot of other people. And they tell you change. Like, oh, you never used to be like that. This is. <laughs> I'm like, exactly. Yeah, no, we, I get a lot of that. The, the you change stuff. Um, that's actually interesting because my dad's an immigrant and he was totally against me owning a business. He thought it was the worst idea in the world. I remember I, I told him about it. He was, I was so excited. And he was like, why would you waste your money on something like that? Like, you have all this money saved. Put it towards something else. Yeah. He's never to this day been to one of my gyms. He's never been. He's never been. He doesn't see a reason for it. Sometimes he'll be like, his, his thing is like, oh, how many hours did you work today? I said, like, oh, fuck, I don't even know, Dad. I couldn't tell you. He's like, well, I work like 60 hours a week. You know, that's what a guy does. He, su he, he supports his family. I go, Dad, my family supported. He doesn't understand the passive income. He thinks you work, 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 and then the bosses reward you. You get paid by the hour. You get paid by the hour. You know, and so for, for me, I never had anyone that was an entrepreneur in my life. I was doing shit as a kid that was entrepreneur-esque, but I did, there was no title for it, right? When, when, when we were younger, I didn't think it was possible to own a business unless you were like a millionaire or a celebrity because, you know, I didn't know the ins and outs. And that's what I feel like a lot of kids listening to this are like, man, I want to open a gym. You could open a gym. A lot of people could open a gym right now. You're not lacking anything other than the experience, yeah. right? And some people open gyms and they throw money into it, a lot of money because maybe their family has money or they have money, but there's a lot more that goes into it than just having fancy equipment. That's why you see Places like, what is it, uh, Barbell Brigade? Is that what they're called? Bridge, right? right, right. Is that what they're called? Yeah, I went to their gym one time, literally just barbells. <laughs> There's no, no equipment, no nothing in there, but that place was thriving because the people that own it, I never met them. I've seen them on Instagram. They created a culture, and they created a buzz around that place, a family feel that everyone wanted to go to. People not CrossFit. I love CrossFit because of the fact that everyone feels like a family there, yeah. and you always want to go back to a place that you feel appreciated and welcome that so you know Build, building that that community inside what you do right like when we like us here we're at the podcast we built a community we, we built a honestly i think a powerful friend group yeah got, you got a good system yeah. yeah like we're all thriving in in different scenarios and then when we come together we're just like yo like how can we better each other That's how, what's about. how can we do this how can we do that and i think that's just that's just the point is to be better than what you were last year, like without any ifs, buts, or what ifs, go and do it. And Mayweather said it best. If I if I didn't change within an, a minute, an hour, a month, a year, I wasted fucking time. 100%. And I'm like, damn. Yeah, I mean, and that's something you could take with you even at a younger age. You don't have to wait till you get older to, to really make those moves. And like you, you said. You, you don't know. have to wait to go uh, to Vegas with your boys or, or Papa's and beer. Uh, and be like, <laughs> Oh, well, I want to experience life first. I'm like, fuck. Okay, <laughs> it is what it is, bro. Yeah, you know, get that shit out of your system early. Yeah. You know, I got that shit out of my system early, so I'm, I'm good with that. I think that's important, too. You know, you got to live life. There's a balance. And I think because um, I think I didn't go to college, so people think that I'm going to be the first one to preach not going to college. Yeah. But I think it depends on what you want to do. You know, I get that a lot. Like, wh wh where would you want to see your daughter in, you know, when she's an adult, you know, has her career? I said, whatever makes her happy. I mean, I don't, I try not to relate money to happiness because I feel like it does contribute, but that's not the end all. So I don't want my daughter to get tied up in what numbers in her bank account. And that's how happy she either is or isn't. Because as you know, you know, simple things like your, your kids bring you joy, you know, nice. having, having your, my wife brings me joy and I can be working a nine to five and still kind of have that joy, but then also following your passion. So I feel like if you could hit on all of those, depending if you want kids or you don't want kids, the first thing is if you go to work and you're not like, fuck, I got to go to work, you're winning, right? Nice. If you wake up in the morning and you're like, hell yeah, I get to go work out, shoot a podcast, interact with trainers, drop some gems, and I'm getting paid for this. Facts. Right? Shit, I'm uh... So if you've tuned in this long, remember you got to subscribe to 
and follow all the pages that we'll link down below. Um, what? Meanwhile, I serve the Terra Mana. What? <laughs> what is? And I think what takes off and what people listen to is certain things, certain quotes that they resonate with for a certain amount of time, maybe the time of their life. Is there a quote or saying that you resonate with for like maybe when you started, maybe right now, um, that had like you always just remember? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know it verbatim, but it's actually funny. When I decided to, to go and be, I was already an entrepreneur in the sense where I was a personal trainer, but when I decided to, to open Self Maids, um, I went into this bathroom and, you know, you're peeing in the stall and there's this sign of this old man and it says, 25 years from now, you're going to regret the things that you didn't do and not the things that you did do. And that hit hard because, you know, again, looking back at my dad, my dad had probably so many, he wanted to be a chef. You know, I got that out of him one time when he was drinking. Um, <laughs> he just never pursued it, but he likes yeah. to cook and he likes to do things. And I'm like, man, he has so much regret. I don't want to live life with regret. And you guys, you guys that are listening to this podcast, I would say the biggest thing is do it while you're young because you have nothing to lose. It may seem like you have a lot to lose, but you really have nothing to lose when it comes to this this entrepreneurship or just following your passion. If anything, you're gonna, you may fail, but you're gonna learn so much more from that failure than you ever would if you just would have been an instant success. And that's why you see a lot of people that were instant success and then they failed and they had to close down whatever they were doing and they reopened and they rebranded even better because they understood, you know? So for me, it's like, try to live life without regret yeah. because you may think, oh, I'm 25, I'm 26, I'm 24, I'm still young. Life comes at you very, very fast. Yep. Very it fast. fucking does. And there's things that may happen in your life that are gonna force you to either man up to that reality, having kids, getting married, you know, maybe you have to support your family, you know, God forbid something happens to someone in your family that you have to be financially responsible for it. So for me, I'm prepared for it all, but I'm so glad that I never, I don't have any regret, dude. Everything I'm doing in life, I'm literally living it now. You know, my uh, father-in-law is a, is a fire captain for San Jose. That was my easy route. You know, when I was a trainer, he was benefits, money. I went through the whole thing. I could have got in. And in my heart, I'm like, I do not want to do this, dude. Nothing against them. I, I love what they do. I respect them totally. But I feel like I had so many ideas in my head. I was so, I was so uh, artsy, and I had so many things that I wanted to do with my own brand. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I don't want to be that dude that's sitting on that couch as a firefighter for whatever amount of years. Yeah, he's making money. Yeah, he's doing stuff. But I know I could be so much bigger and better. I, I think one thing for sure, um, and this is one thing that I was telling my girlfriend. I was like, look, I don't want to be 35, 40. 50 or in the middle of work and telling somebody what I always wanted to be. Yes. I want to tell you what I, what I love doing and what I love who I am instead of fuck man, you know, I could have been this and like that old high school superstar. Oh yeah. In high school I could have been pro. Right. But you know, it's just things didn't work out. I'm like, you probably didn't have it. And if you, if you did, you wouldn't be sitting here talking about what if. Yeah. Like I know one of, uh, one of my big boys, Paco, he just, he made it out of city, first one to go to UCLA, and just external reasons that he blew out both of his knees. Wow. It's, that, that was it. That's life. That was life. Yeah. He was like, he still got his degree, did everything right, and he started powerlifting, and again, went, blew out another knee. Mm. And he started going back, everything was going good, and I just seen this kid recently, and he was like, bro. And again, he blew out. <laughs> you would think that fool would li yeah. learn, but <laughs> he was like, you know, like obviously done powerlifting finally. Yeah. <laughs> but he was just like, I'm. S I started giving. I stopped giving a fuck about everybody else. I stopped worrying. Started worrying about me. I put myself first. Now you don't really hear from me, or I'm doing my thing. I love what I do. I get paid well. I love what the scenario I'm in, and I'm building something bigger for my family. A hundred percent. I'm like, bro. I love. That you're talking that way now because you suffered losses. You thought you were going to do one thing and it went the other way. And that's why I tell everybody that, yo, like, there's scenarios that, and shit that's going to happen to you. You may not have zero control of. But the one thing you do have control of is the way you act upon that. That's, I mean, that's facts. And it, 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 those always sound cliche and those are always said. But I always tell people the things that sound cliche, they're timeless for a reason. Yeah. Because people have lived it and they've done it. You know, I tell people all the time, you, you know, you can't control what happens. You're going to control yourself. And so let's just say you lose a bunch of clients. Like you could have a, a pity party or you can get back on the grind. And usually what ends up happening when you see someone that has all the tools is 
I mean, besides your boy that blew out his knees, that's, there's nothing you can do for that. <laughs> yeah. But there's people that are like, oh, yeah, I started this clothing brand, bro. It's, it's really cool. Like, can you wear it for me? And, you know, put it on IG. I'm like, well, send me some stuff. I'll see. Um, and then they're hot for a second, and then they fail. I go, what happened? Oh, yeah, man, it didn't hit. It's not that it didn't hit. It's that you didn't adjust to the times, or you didn't put as much effort into the content, or you didn't do something. You weren't all in. Is that the way? So whenever someone fails at something, I just say you're not all in. Yeah. And, and it, takes, it takes a lot. You have, to have, you have to hear it from someone you respect. But I've heard that before when I failed. And someone's like, you're just not all in it. And that's exactly why you're, you're this is when I was corporate. You know, I was struggling with numbers and a, a supervisor's like, you're not all in, are you? That's why your shit sucks. And I was like, fuck, he's right. I'm not. Even, even yeah. after COVID, you know, I wasn't fully all into the gym because I was recovering from, you guys got to understand, during COVID, I was getting shit from the city for, I was getting hit daily with $3,500 um, charges. charges. So I had, when COVID ended, I had $280,000 that I had a dispute with them that I wasn't going to pay. So then I have to pay $10,000 to a lawyer to settle that. Then I had to do court. I had to do Zoom calls. I had to do all kinds of stuff just to get back to settle on something to pay them. Those are stuff people don't know under, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah. So my mental was completely gone. On top of that, I'm trying to be a dad. I'm trying to be, you know, a husband. I'm trying to be there for the trainers. So 2020 took a lot out of me where I was like, it took me to 2022 to understand, like, I got to get back on my shit because I'm not really pushing as hard as I used to push. And there's a lot of things that I changed within myself, how I move um, to make sure that my businesses are, are successful. But I was there even with all my success going, oh, it's this person's fault. Oh, it's because of this. It's because of that. And really, I mean, I had to talk with myself. I'm like, bro, you're the fucking owner. You're the captain of the ship. It ain't nobody's fault but yours. If you don't move, then we're not moving. And I had to have that realization with myself, which I do often because now I'm old enough to have that conversation or, or talk to my business partner. Again, talking to someone that you respect and that could actually yes. add value to it. And she said the same thing, bro, you're not really here. You know what I mean? You're not really doing what you should be doing. And all it took was that for me to be like, boom. I'm going to be back on the horse. Let's do this. And so when people tell me, oh, I did this, but it didn't work, it's not that it didn't work. Yeah. It's that you weren't all in. I have a trainer, you know. They'll come in. They'll do well in the beginning, especially summer. If you're looking to get into personal training, get in during the summer because you're going to build your clientele like crazy. Yeah. So that's just a little, a little note. Um, <laughs> they get in during the summer. The winters come, you know, holidays. They lose all their clients. I'm like, you never were all in it. You were just riding that wave. You had no systems in place, and that's why you're at where you're at. So in order to rebuild, you have to be all in it. Not go find that nine to five, not go work a part-time job. You know, usually what happens at our gym is they start nine to five, work part-time trainer. I've had like five trainers that all quit their normal jobs and now they, they're training full-time. You know, that's because they have the backing of me. They have the backing of all the other trainers that are successful and they see the vision. If they put their all in, they take, they take that leap of faith, how much more you could expand your brand. Damn. And I think that's what, you know, kind of going back to, you know, you asked me what's so different about self-made. I feel like people pay to be in a sorority. People pay to be in a fraternity. Why? Right? People say you buy friends, but really what you're doing is you're getting their connections. You're getting other connections. When you're in self-made, right? I, if anyone that listens to this podcast, if you go on your explore page, just go on your explore page and tell me you don't see at least five posts that have red and black gyms, right? There's your favorite Instagram celebrities yeah. are at self-made. Your, your favorite people are at self-made, right? Whether they're a self-made trainer or not. Our brand is so strong, right? You're going to enter our fraternity. We're going to show you the network. We're going to show you what to do to make you a better trainer. And that's one thing that I can back is that I know the value of training. So I can show you how to be a better trainer and a better, I guess you could call it influencer on social media. I can show you how to use those tools. I can show you what to do. No other gyms are doing that, right? That's how you said. I can add value. I so can. I, I, yeah, I can. I, I have so many people that I can refer to that I've added value to. And now they could come back and speak on it. Like, yeah, Jay helped me with this. Jay helped me with that. Yeah. And it's not to brag. It's not to boast, but it's to let you guys know that, yeah, I'm good at what I do. And so when you partner with self-made, now you're working with 50 other entrepreneurs that are all thinking, what's the next move, right? When you go to our gym, you see nothing but cameras out. You see people shooting content. Tripods, you try pods everywhere, yeah, yeah, right? Because yeah. the, the importance of it, you go to a corporate gym, they're thinking pop, pop the, uh, or type in your code, Okay, I'm on, I'm on now. I have these two clients. Okay, I'm out. No one's thinking bigger. And that's, I always relay that back to like a fraternity because when you, if you're ever in a fraternity, all they do is talk about, oh, my dad's rich. My dad does this. These connections are made through here. That's yeah. what you're kind of paying for. So I tell people, man, it just depends on where you want your business to go. Not to say you can't do it outside self-made because I've seen it done and 100% it could be done. But 
um, our brand, our network, our, so our morals, are. our family support, what we offer, special. it's special, bro. Yeah. It's special. So I would have never backed it. And I, I'll sit here with anybody <laughs> that has negative to say about it, and I'll go back and forth with them, you know? Yeah. Um, well, that's how they said. I defend mine to there's no tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And no it, matter I mean, what. I mean, the thing is that we have proven results. <laughs> <laughs> we have proven results, you know? Like and it or not. Like it or not. And that's the thing is I always tell people, I strayed away from saying our gym's better because every gym is good, right? I... I, I we coined the phrase, it's community over competition, Thanks. right? And, that, that's, and I, I hold that very strongly because you're, I'm, I'm going to open a podcast or start a podcast. You have a podcast. What do we do? We network, right? I have this guest that may be sit better for yours. I may do this. You come out to my podcast. This is the community we build. Thanks. Is going to make us so much stronger than if we're competing. Oh, don't do Jay's podcast because, you know, X, Y, Z. Yeah, because even when you started posting it, like, I just saw it. I was like, bro, that's fucking sick. Like, you, how you said, you built the community, you built the connections, and you said, you mentioned it when we took the little break that you're getting other people that, you know, helped you. Like a lot of people, if you're tuning in now, you got to go back to like the beginnings, first 20 episodes. They were all people that have helped me. Like funny as shit and craziest is them three were all on the podcast. Really? Oh, they yeah. Were, I think I've seen a couple. Yeah. yeah like, I went back. I listened. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. Like we're all, they were all guests on the podcast. Yeah. We came to LA and. There we are. Here yeah. we are. And it was just all people that, and I tell everybody, like, yo, these people added value to my life. Uh-huh. I owe them a lot more than what they think. And I know their story, as much as it helped me, it could help somebody else. Yep. So, like, I had my best friends that ex- escaped death twice. Oh, shit. Another one that lost his arm, and now he's the happiest motherfucker ever. I have other ones that, man, like, Everything was against them, and they still made it. And I'm like, yo, like, we're brothers. We're boys. Yeah. We're, I'm your friend. I'll help you whatever we can. And it's the same thing. Building that community. And I know you have a whole day ahead of you, right? I know you have a whole day ahead Never of you. Never too busy for uh, a <laughs> toast, though. For a great conversation. <laughs> um, but what would be a gem that you would tell Maybe a, a young 15-year-old Jason. Ooh, 15-year-old. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's, let's go 18. Let's 15, go 18. 15, I was still wild. Uh, <laughs> um, huh, a good gem that I would tell, even just younger me, younger anyone, yep. is um, always understand that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to fail at some point, right? But what you do with those failures, what you do with those mistakes moving forward is what's going to make your future. So don't get hung up on what you could have done, what you should have done differently, Learn from every single mistake you make and turn that into a positive because everything that I've gone through that was a negative, it's literally helped me be successful in what I do now, having these conversations with you. You know, everybody wants to be a Kobe or LeBron, but when it comes time to taking that last shot, you know, Kobe either makes it, he's a hero, he misses it, he's, he's hated, he's a villain. Take those shots. Take every fucking shot you can take if you're 15, if you're 16, because I've met some talented 15-year-olds, you know. So take every shot you can with every opportunity you have and just watch your whole career, your life blossom. Damn. Shoot your shot player. <laughs> Shoot it until you miss. <laughs> and even if you miss, keep shooting. Hey, hey, yeah. Co- right. I'm going to toast with my tequila. Do you want to toast with the water? With no, the- no, pour me some tequila. She, you want the Don Julio? You want the Terramana? E- right. Let's do the Don. The Don. Yeah, yeah. Are we drinking out of the bottle? You can drink however you want. You got a shot glass? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, we have the red glass. I mean, the red cup. Yeah. And I don't drink either, so this is a, this is a this big is, moment. This is, we're not drinking. We're, uh, we're toasting. We're toasting to a great That's conversation, good, to a great life. We're doing shots, though, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he goes, yeah. So what you think, bro? <laughs> it's because we were going to sip it from the beginning, but the conversation was just too good. I was like, I can't stop this. So if you tune in this long and you reach the end of this episode, if you're watching this on the way to work or wherever, at whatever time, make sure you grab whatever you're drinking, coffee, water, maybe alcohol. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I hope not if you're on your way to work. Yeah, <laughs> not, hopefully not. Maybe you're too stressed. But make sure you subscribe to the movement because it's only growing, getting better. These, this is, was not scripted. No fucking questions. No. Nothing came out of my fucking pocket. This was just an idea, and I knew the conversation that needed to happen. And I'm very appreciative that you stopped here first on your first stop <laughs> of the day. Um, but I'm hope whatever we said today helps 
anybody that listened in in whatever shape, way, or form, like us, hate us. I hope it still helped you. Yep. Because we're only striving for more. So Ooh. stay tuned for the podcast that's going to come out soon. Yes, sir. You'll be on. Don't worry. I got for you. the movement and the ongoing growth of self made. Yes, sir. And shit to a great life. Hey, thank you guys toast, for having man. me. It's an honor, honestly. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Let's go. Jesus Christ. Podcast so done. Good. We just got done. They all showed up. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at my dude. Hey, a new whip. whip. <laughs> yeah, point he, point gas prices got him crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Zooming out here. <laughs>